Hey there, this is Akshit Madan. Welcome back to a new video. And in this video, we are going to learn the solid principles. So first of all, why exactly we have to learn these principles and what exactly are these principles that we have to find in this video. So first of all, answering your simple question, why do you need to watch this video? Why do you want to learn solid principles, right? So many people ask me that how to become a good software engineer. Anyone can become a developer. Anyone can become a software engineer. But you know, when you put a word good, that means your fundamentals are very clear, your basics are very clear. And these OP, that is object oriented programming, and these solid principles are nothing but they are the fundamentals of a programming language, right? So if you are working with the OP language, that is an object oriented programming language, whether it is Python or Dart, then that means you will be using these solid principles for sure. If you are working with the real world industry standard project or you know, a production ready code you are working with, that means you have to apply the solid principles. Otherwise, what will happen your code or the project that you're working on will not be scalable, will not be maintainable or will not be, uh, you know, manageable when it scales up. So that's why we need to use the solid principles because they are defined as the rules when you work with classes and objects, right? So OP is nothing but classes and objects, right? And there are certain paradigms that you have to follow. And before we proceed, my full stack Flutter plus TypeScript plus MongoDB plus Node.js course is also live. The link is in the description. And even if you don't want to purchase the code, feel free to join my community. It is free of cost and there people are asking doubts. I'm helping them to answer their queries. And you can even check my course and you can also uh, join this community for free. We have chat, we have feed, we have everything. So simply uh, solid principles are again some paradigms which you have to follow when you write good code, okay? So first of all, let's understand what exactly are these solid principles. So I'll give you the you know code examples also uh, in this video when we'll be working with one one principle when we'll be understanding those principles. But first of all, let's understand the definition or the statement that you can give to an interviewer if someone asks you to define what are solid principles or why do we need uh, these principles, right? So the solid principles are a set of design principles, right? software design principles or code design principles when you're designing your code or designing your software. I'm not talking about UI UX, I'm talking about the technical design, right? So design principles in software development aimed at making a software design more understandable, flexible and maintainable. You know, it's all about when, you, when your company scales up, when your code or your project scales up, everything revolves around three things. Understanding of the code, flexibility of your code and maintainability of your code right or overall we can say that how much scalable your code is right if you have written bad code that won't be scalable if you have written good code that will definitely be scalable and solid principles helps you to write good code okay let's go to the next slide which starts with the first design principle which comes under the solid which starts from s that is single responsibility principle and as the name defines you know single responsibility principle it states that in this definition you have to give to your interviewer that is a class should have one and only one reason to change okay so when you write code you will start with writing a class then you will create certain objects of that class right so if you are writing such a code where one class can be mutated or can be changed because of multiple reasons that means your code is not following the single responsibility principle okay let's say if you create a user class now that user class in future if you want to change that user class or the logic inside user class there should be only one reason to change or if you are writing a product class right then there should be only one reason to change the logical implementation of that product class now i know you would you won't be following me or you won't be understanding so let's take a very simple example in dart language because i'm an expert of dart so i can write in dart but yeah you can principle remains the same you just need to change the syntax so just try to don't code just try to understand the logic with me in this video then you can apply in your video also in your code also okay so let's start understanding the single responsibility principle through a code example so what i'll do is uh, i'll create a simple class that is your product service class right so class product service class that means whatever code i'm going to write in this class will be related to your product Right. So in this uh, class, what I'll write is I'll write certain functions. I won't be writing the whole functions, but certain function definitions I'm going to write. Let's say one is your 
saving a product you know a new product is there which has come to your inventory and this product you have to save in your database so let's say the function name is uh, save product okay save product and there will be you know some uh, implementation of this code and this uh, function is going to take a product so let's say a product is there which is another class class product right and this product has let's say name of the product size of the product title of the product description of the product so this function is going to take a product and it is going to save this product into the database right and that database can be a local database it can be a, a remote database okay so this is your first function now i can have another function which is void update product and again this is going to take a product product right and there will be some implementation of this update product now i can have another function that says delete a product which takes a string product id and there will be some implementation and i can have get a product and this get product is going to give me a product in future so future product get product and this is again going to take a product id product id and there will be some implementation so in my class a uh, product service i'm having four functions saving a product updating a product deleting a product and getting a product right now let's assume that i was saving the product in the local database right for this example just assume that first of all in my code i had written that this save product actually saves the product in the sqlite local database right in my mobile app itself or in my web app itself but now in the future what happens is the requirement changes and you have to save this product on the remote database let's say mongodb atlas or firestore or you know postgresql you have to save that product in the remote database that means if one requirement changes then you have to change this product service once so one reason is there by which you have to change the implementation of this product service class and let's say i have another function which calculates the tax that needs to be imposed on this product right so that tax is going to be double so double calculate tax okay calculate tax and this is going to calculate the tax now the tax can also change in the future tax rates changes right so this can be another reason for changing the for coming to this class and changing the implementation logic of this class right so i can say that this product service class can be changed because of two reasons that is either the implementation of safe product can be changed right and either the calculation tax logic can change this two reasons can actually make us to change the implementation of this product service class so i said that one reason to change a class so that means if i am talking about product service this function can remain here because this is related to product and i can put this crud operation in this product service class but this calculate tax what i can do is i can create another class that is class tax calculator right and this class this tax calculator class can actually hold this function this function takes a product and returns me some tax value let's say tax is like 10% so 0.1 into price plus price is your final uh, or product uh, 10% of price so that is your tax now let's say tomorrow the tax rate changes to 0.2 you can make this 0.2 and only one reason is there to change this class and only one reason is there to change this product service class so now the code is good and it is following the single responsibility principle right so in your application code also whatever logical or classes you are creating make sure that they are following the single responsibility principle okay let's go to the next principle so our next principle is open closed principle o s o right so it states that software entities classes modules functions etc should be open for extension but closed for modification right so let's say you have written a class let's say you have written a module package or a function right when you are saying that your code of that class is complete then they should be open for extension but they should not be open for modification 
right? Let's say you wrote a, uh, you know, e-commerce application and you have deployed that app on Play Store or App Store or your web app is also live, right? Now, once it is live, the classes that you have written in your code should be open for extension. That means they can be extended with new features, with new functionalities. But the previous code should not be modifiable, right? Previous code should not be modified, right? So the previous code is closed for modification, but new extension and new features can be added. Now again, I know you won't be understanding this. So let's go ahead and again see an example. So I'll remove this whole code and let's try to understand the uh, O principle that is your open for extension and closed for modification. So what I'm going to do is let's say I'm having a um, class, right? Class is a user class, right? And this user class has a type of user. So I can say that final string type. It can be an admin user, it can be a normal employee, it can be a customer, it can be a waiter, it can be a number of, you know, types of customers can be there, types of users can be there. So this class is a user which depicts a user and it has a type. Okay. Now I have class user manager, user manager, right? So what happens in this class is we have a function in this class, which has a manage function manage function. Now in this manage function, we have to do some stuff, which is, you know, different for different types of users. Let's for that I'll use switch case. So I'll use a switch case. And in this we are dependent on the user. So let's say this manage also gets a user. So user user. So we are dependent on user dot type, right? And now in this switch case, we have to write certain cases. So case, let's say first case is admin user. Right. And you'll be write, writing some code for this. Let's say you have another case, case for uh, employee user. You will be writing some code here. Let's say you have another case, case for customer. All of these three are types of users, right? And you have to do some stuff for here. Now you deployed the code and it is live. But tomorrow, let's say one more case comes, right? So what you are doing, the previous code, which is user manager, you are extending it right? You are extending it with new functionality. That is fine. But you are also modifying it, right? You're modifying this user manager class because you have to come again here and you have to again write the case for a uh, waiter. Let's say a new user type has come that is waiter and you have to modify this piece of code, which is wrong according to the O principle, right? So what we can do is in inside this user class itself, right? Inside this user class itself, we can have a manage function, right? Inside this user class itself, we can have one manage function, which is, you know, uh, what we can do is not, not uh, just not, uh, this is not enough. We have to again write certain classes. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you how this increases the num amount of code you're writing, but this simplifies the code and it also follows the O principle, right? So what you will do is, instead of just having the user manager and user, Initially itself, you will write class admin user, right? Admin user, which extends the previous user, right? You can have class, uh, what is a second type? Employee. So employee user, which extends the user, right? You can have a class, a customer user, which extends user. Now in these three classes itself, you have your manage function, not like this. You have your manage function, manage for admin, then you can have manage for employee, you can have manage for customer, right. And here, when you are, you know, calling this, uh, user manager and you're calling the switch, you, what you can do is in, for this uh, thing, remove this and just, you can call instead of just writing the switch case also, you can just call user dot manage because every user has this manage function now, right? So you can directly call the manage function instead of uh, having a switch case and writing the condition in this user manager class, you can just do this. Now, if tomorrow you have a waiter class coming up, what you can do is you can just define another, another waiter user, 
which extends user and it also has its own manage function and you do not need to touch this user manager class right let me yeah so user manager class you don't touch because it will directly go inside user and it will directly go inside the manage function right you just need to extend your code with the new functionality with the new feature but you do not need to modify the previous code that's what we wanted open for extension but closed for modification in this case you don't to modify your previous code you just need to extend your code again it's simple right so let's go ahead and see the next uh, principle so let's go ahead and see the next principle that is your list of substitution principle right so it states that objects of a super class simple inheritance super class a subclass parent class a child class objects of a super class shall be replaceable with the objects of a subclass without affecting the correctness of the program right so i it, it says that objects of super class so parent class will also have some objects right and subclasses that means the child classes will also have some objects right so this list of substitution principle states that the objects of the parent class can be replaced with the objects of the child class let's go ahead and understand with code example let's remove this and let's have a abstract class called bird abstract class bird and we know that a bird can fly right so a void uh, not a void it is void so void fly okay and what i can do is now i can create some child class let's say class sparrow which is going to extends this uh, bird class right and we can have our own override function override function for fly void fly and we can say print sparrow is flying sparrow is flying okay now i can have let's say another class it can be peacock which is also going to extend bird and we can say peacock is flying peacock is flying okay now what happens what happens we have another class which is ostrich and you know that ostrich cannot fly so if i extends it with bird right and i have to implement my fly function right and ostrich cannot fly so what i have to do is i have to write override void fly and i have to just say here i have to throw an exception right throw an exception exception will say ostrich is cannot fly right this we want to avoid right this birds are extending the bird abstract class but we now know that this ostrich cannot fly and you know what will happen this will throw an exception and an app can crash right so the list of substitution principle states that the objects of the parent class which is the bird class can be replaced with the objects of the child classes now you see that objects of bird class cannot be replaced with the ostrich class objects because ostriches cannot fly right so if i create another uh, class let's say ostrich uh, baby ostrich and which extends an ostrich that object cannot be replaced with peacock why because ostriches cannot fly right so this principle is now wrong right this code is not following the l principle that is list of substitution principle right so we have to write the correct code for this and how can we write it so let's try to write it let's remove this code and let's have another abstract class which is bird and put only those features those functions which are common to all birds do not put any feature or function which uh, can create a controversy right so bird void eat can be a function because every bird whatever bird user enters or user creates is going to eat right so void eat we are 100% sure that there will be no 
controversy there will be no uh, you know conflict right perfect so bird is there let's have another abstract class which is flyable right and only those birds will extend this flyable class who can fly right so abstract class flyable will have an implementation of word fly right okay now we have created two different class two different abstract classes instead of one abstract class okay now what i'll do is class sparrow is going to extends bird and implement the flyable okay now i can have my eat function here right at override you can have your own eat function here and you can have override fly function here right and same case you can do with peacock also right peacock will extend the bird and it will also implement the flyable but when you're talking about an ostrich so class ostrich will only extend bird it won't implement flyable okay now i can just have the override and you can just have eat function here you won't have the fly function here perfect now this is good right because this ostrich does not have any function that is not implementable that is going to throw an exception right there is no uh, such case now or uh, we are we have created two different abstract classes and only those classes will implement this or extend this flyable who can actually fly so sparrows or crows or anything right and ostrich won't implement this flyable because it cannot fly now this code follows the liskov substitution principle perfect i hope you are you are getting it till now now let's go ahead and understand the i principle that is interface segregation principle so it states that no client should be forced to depend on methods it does not use something similar to what we just learned but it is bit different again let me revise the uh, statement no client should be forced to depend on the methods it does not use right let's go ahead and understand with code that will help you a lot so let me remove this and i can also say that to understand this i principle uh, a class should only implement only implement those interfaces which they can fulfill or should not implement any extra interface okay so what we can do is let me define a class phone okay and inside this phone let me have let's say three functions right uh, i can have call function because you can call through a phone you can have a uh, wireless function because they are wireless or mobility can be we can give it another name mobility and you have like play games right and you have like let's say void social media right now if you have a class telephone you know the old uh, age like telephones like which used to exist like before 50 years so if i have a telephone now i cannot extend it with phone because if i extend it with phone i cannot implement the wireless and the play games function it could only be used for calling right and let's say i have like class a simple you know a uh, mobile which used to exist before let's say 20 years which uh, had like black and white screen and you could only they were just mobile phones right you know you they were just uh, not connected to any wire they were just mobile you could not play games you could not use social media you you could not do anything right so class mobile can extends a phone right extend a phone it will be able to implement the call it will be able to implement the wireless but it won't be able to implement play games okay so this is again a class uh, which is extending to a interface or you know abstract class but it is not able to implement the functions which are inside the abstract class so this is also not suggested then you have a smartphone right it can extend a phone completely because it can do all the three things so this is fine but these two are not correct and they are not following the i principle right so what we can do is instead of defining it like this i can have a phone and i'm sure that call is a uh, call can be used uh, because any phone can obviously call so this phone void call is perfect i can have another class okay another class which says uh, wireless 
फंक्शन फंक्शनैलिटी क्लास और वायरलेस फंक्शनैलिटी सर्विस ओके एंड दिस कैन बी अनदर फंक्शन देर कैन बी अनदर फंक्शन विच इज वर्ड वायरलेस एंड आई कैन हैव अनदर क्लास क्लास विच इज प्ले गेम्स सर्विस एंड दिस कैन हैव अ फंक्शन विच इज प्ले गेम्स नाउ वट एल डू इज आई कैन हैव अ टेलीफोन राइट आई कैन हैव अ टेलीफोन विच एक्सटेंड्स टू फोन एंड कैन इंप्लीमेंट दीज टू राइट सॉरी इट कैन नॉट इंप्लीमेंट दीज टू राइट एंड इट विल ओनली एक्सटेंड द फोन मोबाइल विल एक्सटेंड द फोन एंड इंप्लीमेंट दिस वायरलेस फंक्शनैलिटी द स्मार्ट फोन विल एक्सटेंड टू फोन एंड कैन इंप्लीमेंट वायरलेस फंक्शनैलिटी एंड प्ले गेम्स पोर्ट राइट सो आई होप दिस इज क्लियर एंड दैट्स हाउ वी यूज दिस प्रिंसिपल दैट इज इंटरफेस सेग्रीगेशन प्रिंसिपल राइट विच स्टेट्स दैट नो क्लाइंट दैट इज योर स्मार्ट फोन एंड टेलीफोन एंड वायरलेस फोन no client should be forced to depend on methods it does not use telephone cannot use wireless and play games function so why was our client dependent on a phone class which was having these three it should not be the case but later on we we wrote the code which was perfect and it was following the interface segregation principle okay here comes the last principle so let's understand the last principle which is dependency inversion principle okay now it states that uh, high level modules there are certain low level modules which are having the actual implementation the actual logic then there are certain high level modules so it states that high level modules should not depend on low level modules both should depend on abstractions so basically i i want to say that uh, there should be an abstraction layer right uh, there should be an abstraction or simple terms i can say that there is another principle about decoupling the software components uh, which is this uh, d principle and first a component should not care how another component is instantiated or it is implemented right then this principle aims to reduce the dependency of high level modules on the low level modules by introducing an abstraction layer between the high level module and a low level module so there is an abstraction layer right i'll tell you with code example this makes a system easier to modify scale and test right okay uh let me show you an example okay so what i'll do is what i will do is uh let me have a class which is an abstract class so abstract class storage okay you have to store some data that data can be stored on a remote database that can be stored on a file database okay so it it can have a function void save data save data right and this string will have the data right so there is a method that is save data now what we'll do is we will have various implementations or various low level modules right which are going to implement this storage so one low level module can be database storage where your data goes to mongodb or remote database so database storage which is going to implement implements this storage right and i can have my override function which is going to store void save data it takes string s and it is going to go to mongodb mongo tip now i can have another class class which can be your file storage class file storage this is also going to implement storage and this is going to go and save your file or save your data in a file so void again save data will be there string s i am not worrying about the uh, you know spellings because we don't need to run this code right and this is going to go and save your string in a file now the main thing comes what is the importance of this abstraction abstract class i i'll tell you just give me a minute let me write down the complete code right and now what i'll do is i'll have a data processor class the class which processes your data so data processor class right 
and inside this i'll create a object of storage final storage storage right and i will have a constructor of data processor data processor and it takes the object so this dot storage this is my constructor and now i can have a you know a function which is process data this takes my data string data and it has your uh, it calls your storage dot save data function save data and this puts your data okay so i have a data processor class which creates an object of storage and it stores my data right and in between here you can have some processing also processing let's say you have to do some stuff on your data right you have to convert one string to uppercase or lowercase whatever you want to do you can do it in this processor class this is your data processor class this is basically a class created to process your data before you call the main function or you interact with the low level module these two are your low level modules right okay now i am calling my void main function void main function this is going to this is going to uh, first of all have a storage uh, this will be my database storage an object right so just creating an object of database storage and i'll have a storage which will be my file storage file storage is equal to file storage okay now i will have an object of data processor class also so data processor uh, it will be a data processor data processor and i have to you know pass the database storage which is my object database storage and i will have a data processor now you will understand why i did all of this thing for just calling these two functions now you will understand this can be a file processor or file database storage file database processor right and again data processor you have to pass the file storage here okay perfect now what i'll do is i i can call my save data function using the data processor uh, object right so this is your database processor and this is your file database processor right now let's say i have to store some string in my remote database that is mongodb so i'll just say database processor that is your this object dot save data and you can pass your string now let's say i want to call the file storage so what i'll do i'll say file database storage file database processor that is your this dot save data right now to communicate this is our main class right this is our main function now to store data to store string data into my database and into my file i could have directly communicated with these two classes also but what i did i created a processor class to process my data and i created a abstraction class okay so this storage you see this storage this is an abstract class between your high level code and your low level code okay why because here if you want to like you know extend some another way of storing or saving the data or you your implementation of this save data changes for file storage and database storage you can directly change this code you don't need to go here or process our data or your abstract class nothing so that's why this abstract class is necessary which acts as a communication between your low level module and your high level module okay and the purpose of this processor class is nothing but you know just to have a class in between where you can process your data before calling the low level module this is your low level module so before calling the main thing before calling the low level implementation you can process your data in between you don't need to go there and process so i hope you enjoyed this solid principles video and uh, so i hope you enjoyed this solid principles video and if you want to learn full stack flutter plus node.js express.js uh, uh, that render and postman from me the full stack flutter app development course from beginner to advanced you can check out the link in the description the course link is live okay so till the next videos keep coding keep innovating and thanks a lot and if you have any demand from me any video that you want me to create 
feel free to put that in the comment section i'll be happy to create